basic Cisco VoIP configuration. Now, this is where I'm not the greatest. And this is what I do when I'm not the greatest at something. I just lab it up, right? I just lab it up. I create, you know, this output and all of that to guide me to get the functionality. Now, I learned this. I got this set up from Keith Gabhart on YouTube. So this is not my setup. I did a little tweak to it so that I'm able to, you know, cause you're gonna see when we get, when we get to right around here, things get a little bit weird. And in his video, he did it in a different way. And yeah, I decided to take it upon myself to make it a little bit more efficient for myself, right? So ultimately what we want is we want to be able to set up a little phone system in the enterprise network. By the way, I have no idea how IP phones work with regard to communicating to outside networks, being able to call cell phones, being able to call any other number that exists outside of this network. So this is just a very basic setup of VoIP within a private organization. In other words, I don't know how to set up a phone system that will, that'll dial out. This is more so for CCNA level review because CCNA didn't really go too much into the particulars of voice, right? At least that's how I remember it. I remember them only showing us in, at least in my, resor my resources, the switch port voice VLAN command, right? And that's the extent to which I learned voice with Cisco. So I decided to learn VoIP and do a little bit of workup and to see how far I'd get, right? So ultimately, this is what we wanna do. We want to be able to dial these other numbers here, right? And how we do that is literally dialing. You probably can't hear this, but I can, it's in my headphones. And does it show that it's ringing? Yeah, it's ringing, right? I gotta find a way to get the sound to come to the computer, right? Or go to the output for OBS. I'll figure that out when I get off the stream and then we're gonna be able to review my most popular video. Cause I think I'm gonna have some reactions to that and build on top of it. But anyway, ideally, again, we wanna be able to communicate. Okay, it's, it's stuck. We wanna be able to communicate to the other phones that we have here, right? I don't think it, I can't even see this. I can't even see this, it's too small. I gotta zoom in. But, um, just hang up. So, it's very hard to dial these numbers. Yeah, it's ring out, right? So we can see right here, it's ringing. And that's essentially what we wanna do, right? We wanna get these phones to communicate. Now, let's just configure this basic VoIP configuration and we're using a basic setup, a basic topology here. And yeah, let's set everything up, right? So we're gonna connect this phone to this PC, right? PC, PC, boring stuff, PC. We gotta make sure that layer one is good to go. Switch, I think we're gonna use a crossover cable. Switch. Switch. Switch right and then we're going to connect g01 what did i use i want to make sure i'm, I'm aligning 
with this. We could just use G01, it's fine. Um, and then we're gonna connect here, right? Matter of fact, let's not do it that way. No, I don't wanna delete the whole router. So we use one, two, three. Matter of fact, let's do it this way. I wanna make sure that I'm not making any boo-boos. So we have oops, this switch, switch. switch and then we're just gonna go ahead and connect FA01 to FA01 right also got to make sure that you grab yourself a 2811 that is a voice capable router right and then now we're going to set up the switch first right yes in the good old Cisco CLI enable of tea. Let me get some tea, by the way. Right? So, VLAN, VLAN 10. I'm going to name it Data 10. And then VLAN 20. Oops. Let's call it Data 10. And then VLAN... 20 name voice 20 right so that's our data vlan which you could see right here i mean which you can see right here and our voice vlan is right here now we're going to make some miscellaneous vlans and you're going to see why in a second and then we're going to make a native vlan right so now we have VLAN 40, name, miscellaneous, and then VLAN 50, name, native, right? And as you can see in my notes, right, you can see I started talking about some best practices, right? So best practices is when you, or best practice for a switch, for ports that you're not using, is taking unused ports, putting it in an unused VLAN, shutting down all of the ports, right? Shutting down all of the interfaces. Now, that's what we're gonna essentially do here once we allocate the necessary uh switch ports to their respective vlans right so we have let's just go through interface fa01 switch port mode trunk we're gonna put that in a trunking state switch port native vlan 50. switch port and this port trunk native VLAN, right? So this is gonna be, like I said here, it's gonna be the trunk port connecting to the router and then we're gonna be setting up router on the stick, right? Which I went over in a previous video, all right? And then now, interface range FA02 to five, Switch port mode access. This is essential. Switch port access VLAN 10. And then switch port access, it's gonna be switch port voice VLAN 20. Boom. So again, that essentially sets up our, our data VLAN and our voice VLAN, right? Voice VLAN 20. And then data VLAN 
10, not 20, right? So now let's get back to the switch and then let's go ahead and complete those best practices we just talked about. So then we're gonna do interface range FA06 to 24, FA024, right? And then we're going to put them in access mode, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 40. That is the miscellaneous VLAN and we're not gonna be using that VLAN for anything. And then we're gonna do shut, right? We should also ideally do F, we should do int G zero, what was it one? I'm gonna guess one and two interface range, by the way, interface range, cause we're not gonna be using those interfaces, I believe. So interface range G01 and we're going to be, they're going to be in switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 40, right? And we're going to shut them down too. So we shut those down as well. So, oh, another thing with the IP phones, when you getting them ready, Got to plug them in. Got to remember to plug them in. Whether it's Packet Tracer or IRL. Got to plug them in. Because I was wondering why they were down. Boom. So now they're all, they're all set up. Now we need to issue the commands on the router that's going to allow for us to have our phone system going and all set up. Um, we're going to be using DHCP. So, yeah, uh, let me activate it right now on the PC. It's gonna wait till later, but let's do it now. Gonna activate DHCP. Don't think it matters which order you do it in. So now, host name R1. Um, Gonna be using route on a stick to route traffic between VLANs. That's inter VLAN routing 101, right? When you have multiple VLANs on a switch, you essentially are going to make sure that you have some sort of default gateway to route between the VLANs, right? So interface FA 0, 0 dot 10 encapsulation dot one Q and we're going to be doing it's going to be for VLAN 10 and then IP address 192.168.10.1255.255.255.0 all right you could do no shut it doesn't really matter interface FA Zero, zero point two encapsulation dot one Q twenty. We got to add the IP address. IP address one nine two dot one six eight dot twenty dot one two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot oh using a slash mask. So we got the voice VLAN and the data VLAN set up in the sub interfaces FA. 0, 0 0.50 and this is going to be for the native VLAN remember the, the name of the sub interfaces or the numeration of the sub interfaces is not necessarily important or functional in any way except for creating the virtual interface that belongs to a specific VLAN, right? You could call this, we could have called this um, FA00.30, but what actually matters is this command right here and also the correct IP address you want for that VLAN, right? So next is gonna be encapsulation 
Can I tab it again? Dot one Q. I like using the tab button now to complete my commands. Native. Um, that one Q. Oops. 50 native. And I think we are supposed to add an IP address. See, this is where refreshing your memory comes into play. Look, I'm not one of those perfect people that produce this type of content, I'm not an expert. So that's one of the benefits you get with watching me. I keep it real. Like if I don't remember something, I'll look it up and I'll probably put it in another video. Or if I don't know something, I'll simply say, I don't know. And I'll look it up and again, put it in another video. We're all here to learn and to grow. Some people are too prideful and they always try to put on as if they're perfect or something like that. That's not me. I keep it real, as real as I can get, right? I like to make sure that I edit, make sure that the videos look halfway decent, of course. But when it comes to the information part of it, I might make, make a guess and I'm open to being wrong, which is why I say comment and let me know if I'm wrong. But beyond that, I'm flexible with learning, right? So the next thing we wanna do is we're gonna be creating our DHCP pools for the data and the voice VLANs, right? But before we do that, we wanna exclude some IP addresses in order for us to avoid our DHCP server from handing out those IP addresses and causing IP address conflicts, which is gonna mess up the connectivity. And we don't want that, right? So we use this command, IP DHCP excluded address 10.1192.168.10.5. Now this is the range of excluded IP address, right? We go from low to high. IP, what did I screw up? Excluded, did I mess up the, um, I, I messed, do I, did I mess up the, the hyphenation? Oops, dot five. I always mess up the hyphenation. I think it's excluded hyphen address. Yeah, and that makes more sense. I should probably correct it in my notes. And IP DHCP excluded address will it complete the command if i tab it yes it does so moving forward i will do that just in case i forget 20.1192.168.20.5 boom so now we've successfully excluded the ip addresses that we want to statically assign to our um, router and our, um, are we statically assigning these to the phone? Uh, what do we, why did I exclude those addresses? I know one is for the router, but for the, the hosts, I don't think we needed to exclude that many addresses. I gotta review that video again because he excluded those addresses and I just followed along. But I don't know why those IP addresses are static. Hmm. Again, figuring it out as I go along, right? So, as long as, again, as long as we get this stuff to work, right? <laughs> we can review the concepts again later. So, IP DHCP pool, data 10, this is the pool name. Network, you can tab it. I'm gonna practice tabbing because I like doing that. That that ten dot o two five five that two five five that two five five that o and it is extremely hot right now. I don't have air conditioner in this um in this living room. I should probably get one. And I just finished exercising, so my body temp is my core body temp is up. Default router one nine two dot one six eight dot 10 dot one and that default router we're setting it as a default router because 
we're setting the default router as 192.168.10.1 because as you can see up here, the interface, um, the sub interface is set, IP address is set at 192.168.10.1, right? That is the default gateway. We could throw a DNS server in there. I always use Cloudflare. I believe this is Cloudflare. And then now we're gonna do the same thing. IP DHCP pool. We're gonna name it voice 20. I'll call it voice 20. I have in my notes VLAN 20, but voice 20, right? Network 192.168.20.0 255.255.255.0. This is by far not my favorite topic at all at all like it's i don't know phones i find phones to be boring but i'm gonna learn about them learn more about them so this is again we're just setting up the dhcp server um the fault router 10.1 dns server 1.1.1.1 and then exit and also we forgot one thing we need to make sure that this interface is up Right, so now we see that, again, more routing on the stick review, all of these interfaces came up once I enabled this interface right here, FA00. That's because the status of these interfaces is directly tied to the physical interface, or to some degree. We can shut down these interfaces independently but if this interface is not up none of them are going to be up right so again we can shut down these interface interfaces independently of each other but once this one is down all of them is down right let's keep going so now we set up right on the stick we also need to go back into dhcp pool again i totally forgot one important um part right we got the option 150 IP 192.168.20.1. So the option 150 command is a Cisco proprietary command, by the way, or a Cisco proprietary option, is a command that pulls IP phone config from the TFTP server, all available servers that is, which is specified as the router. Option 150 is Cisco proprietary, while option 66 is an IEEE standard, right? So that is important to note. And why is this down? We'll figure that out in a second. Um, so we have to configure that, right? Option 150, IP, 192.168.20.1 that's good now let's figure out why this interface is down should be up do mm. show i p n Huh. Oh, I plugged it into the wrong port. See, that's what happens when you're a boob. F01 to F00, right? It can be simple things like this where you can be troubleshooting for hours and not realize that you have the cable plugged into the wrong interface. This has happened to me many times in my Cisco lab, in Packet Tracer, and this is something that, let me give you a little tip. When you have a problem, no matter what it is in life, always assume that you can take more of the simpler approach, using the simpler solution, right? It doesn't mean take the easy way out of a problem. It means that the problem might be caused by something as simple as a network cable plugged into the wrong jack. And that's what we saw here. 
And this is why I love my videos because all of my labs are not perfect. We see things that happen in the middle of a lab and it's it, it goes wrong for whatever reason and I have to sit here and I have to troubleshoot it. And it shows you that troubleshooting is part of IT. It's not about knowing everything and could be in a master configuration expert or whatever. It's about solving problems. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so attracted to this field too. It's about making an impact, helping people, whether it's what we're doing here with the videos, and then also making an impact by setting people's stuff up <laughs> and fixing people's stuff. I love solving problems. So that was one of the more easier problems to solve, right? So let's get out of here. Now we're gonna be getting to the more exciting part, which is not so exciting for me. I really don't care about phones. <sighs> Good thing I'm not going into, what was it? A collaboration, I believe it is. All right, so telephony service max. What's going on here? What is going on here? See, now we're gonna be doing some more troubleshooting. So server pinged. What's going on here? What's going on here? Why did it give me a um? It gave me a ping conflict. Needs to be server address. Server ping. One nine two. That wants to take that twenty. Dot o. Where is the conflict? Server pinged. Huh? Well, let's let's figure that out later. Let's 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 keep it moving. Max directory numbers three. Max e phones three. IP source address one nine two dot one six eight dot twenty dot one port. 2000 so that means that we're going to be communicating out of this default gateway let me see so the ip source command let's look it up on the internet because i want to know so the ip source address telephony service to identify the ip address and port through which IP phones communicate with the Cisco Unified CME router, which is the 2811 that we're using, use the IP source address command in telephony service or group configuration mode. Okay, great. So that's what that means. Quick Google, right? So now we type in ePhone we're gonna set up the numbers, apparently. ePhone directory number one. Number 1010. I believe these are the, oh shoot. What's going on here? What did I do? I think I made a boo-boo. Is it 10? 10? Directory number. E phone directory number, I believe it's yeah, I set it as one, right? Okay, let's let's go back. E phone DN one. Directory phone okay, I think that's the I think that's where it's supposed to enter. No, I wasn't. Or do I type number ten? I believe that's it. Look. Again, I'm not familiar with this stuff. So which, which mode was I supposed to be in? Let's get back out. Gonna have to watch a, a course on this. E-phone, directory number two. And then what do we do? Oh, and then number 1020. I had a brain fart. Bugging. And I think we just do e phone directory number three. 
as you can see, I'm not gonna be working on nobody's phones, man. I'm not working on nobody's phones. Okay, now let's exit out of here. So we set those up, right? So e-phone one. The phone, the the e-phone, the the e-phone number, which is um the e-phone, the type of e-phone is going to be type 7960, which is what we have here in Packet Tracer. But if you're using a different type of phone, you obviously have to use um, put in a different type, and that's important because the TFTP server has to know which config files to pull down, right? So how about that? 7960 and then um, we have ePhone oops then we're gonna have Mac address let's find the Mac address for it so let's see how we can find the Mac address for this I'm gonna be a smarty pants right here and use the um, do show Mac address dynamic. So this is what the Mac address table is for, right? We have to find the Mac addresses, right? So we see, we're seeing, why are we seeing so many, um, Yeah, I probably screwed something. Uh, I think I screwed something up with, no, I didn't. Anyway, we're gonna have to troubleshoot that later. Um, but FA02, I believe it's gonna be this one that we are using, right? So you don't put this, then um, you sign with ePhone 2. Can I assign the same MAC address to multiple ePhones? Oh, wait. So let's go back. I think I botched something. See, I made a boo boo. Uh oh. Let's see. All right, let's go back. So, did it pick it up? It must have picked it up. It probably picked it up already. Let's go back. So, ePhone one type seventy nine sixty Mac address Mac address is already assigned with ePhone two. Cannot assign same Mac address to multiple ePhones. So I'm using the wrong Mac address. So that's what I'm guessing here. See, I'm trying to figure out why there's four MAC addresses in that VLAN. It's not supposed to be like that. Let me see something. Phone three. So I guess I don't need to put the MAC addresses. I guess they already they already configured. Anyway, let's keep moving. All right. So ePhone, ePhone two, type seventy nine sixty, type seventy nine sixty. And then we're gonna do button one, two. I gotta go back into ePhone one. Button one. I think that they've been, I don't know. Let's see what happens. Um, ePhone three, type 7960. Yeah, they're registering on their own, which is weird because that's never happened for me before. Hey, first time for everything. Button one, three. All right, so let's see if this works, which is probably 
which is probably not gonna work. Let's see. So I'm gonna try to call one phone with the other and see what happens. It works. Honestly, this is one of the first lab videos where I could say I have no idea what the heck I was doing on the phone side. I have no idea, which is why I like working through these labs and just figuring it out as I go along. I have no idea what I what I just did. And they all they're all working. So my guess is what was and that one worked too. My guess what was going wrong was I was trying to huh. stop and think for a second. So that's pretty much the, the configuration to get these IP phones to work within a private enterprise network site, if you will, or a private enterprise network. I don't understand at all whatsoever, again, how to, how we'd be able to set this up where we'd be able to call out. That's gonna be for another video, but this is for more of a local, I guess, enterprise where you can get the basic setup of the phone, get them calling each other, get them communicating with one another. And that's pretty much that for the configuration.